Yo, what's up YouTube? It's Manticore here back with another video. So today is Monday and that means that last night Attack on Titan and Demon Slayer both had their newest episodes. Now, we're not an anime channel, we're Yu-Gi-Oh here, but uh, oh dude, I, I can't get over both of those shows right now, man. They're both like competing for which one's going to be the best show for the season, dude, and I just can't I cannot tell you how awesome both those shows are right now. So if you're not watching Demon Slayer or Attack on Titan, you gotta get on those shows and catch up. But today we are gonna go over another deck uh, that's not Phantom Knights. So today we are actually gonna be going over Sky Strikers. Now Sky Strikers are tip essentially a tier one deck that I think are very good in top tier play right now. Now, if you're like in the lower ranks, honestly, if you're not in plat yet, I mean, Sky Strikers are gonna be hard for you to grasp. But if you're in the lower ranks, I mean, Sky Strikers is not a linear deck for you to be able to uh, control. Everything that you do from searching your deck and summoning monsters, you have to know what you're going to be doing five turns from the time that you do that, you know, activate that effect. Uh, you know, compared to Phantom Knights, I know that I just need to get my extenders on the field. So whatever I got to do to get my extenders on the field, I do. But Sky Strikers are not that easy. So first, we're actually going to go ahead and go over some duels here. We're going to go over this one here. Um, I have three videos we're going to go over. If you guys like the content, we're going to go ahead and make the deck profile. I have... All the uh, save replays I have right now are Sky Striker replays, so I might make a second video going over some more Sky Striker deck profiles. Uh, but here this one is. Um, let's see. So first, he's going first. Obviously, you try to you want to go second typically with Sky Strikers. Now he summon he normal summons already, right? So he normal summons his um, Mahime, his Lulu. And which wasn't a very good idea. I think that for him to continue on with his line of play, he should have special summoned first. Um, but obviously he had to have a monster on the field. So if he could have played like a spell or something like that, I would have rather that. But so he's already normal summoned. And I know that he has to activate the effect in hand. So he reveals one in hand. And I'm going to go ahead and ash that so that he can't continue his play. And from there, I mean, I shut down the virtual, this virtual world deck. I don't know if he just didn't have very, you know any other virtual world cards in his hands. He could have... He could have uh, revealed, but uh, it shut down his play, and from here I can go on to my combo. So now I have Reinforcement of the Army, which is my extender that I need to go into. That's fine if he activates the trap. I don't really care for that because he doesn't have um, any banished uh, virtual world cards, so he can go ahead and do that. I, I take the Ray. You want to take Ray first before the, before taking Rose because he has no extra deck monsters in his extra deck monster zones. And I want to have the Ray in my graveyard in case he does happen to remove one of my Link monsters from the play. Or like get some out of, off the field. That way I have a follow up with the Ray next turn. So I'm going to go straight into Hayate. Activate the Engage. Get the Multi-Roll. That way I have further plays to go on later. So I'm going to go ahead and attack. Use its effect. Send another uh, spell to Grave. Now I wasn't thinking here. I set another Engage. I shouldn't have done that. I should have sent another spell to Grave. But it's okay. I have th uh, three spells in Grave right now. Which is good enough for me. Going to my Kagari. I'm going to go ahead and take another en one of the Engages. Add it to my hand. Now before take using the Engage. Make sure you use the multi roll. That way you get the set effect at the end phase. Use the Engage. But now I only have two. So I'm not going to get the draw effect. But I do know that I want to get Monster off his field. Because if he keeps Monsters on the field, he can go into Shen Shen. Shen Shen is not good for uh, Sky Strikers. So get that off the field. And then I'm going to go ahead and link into Engage into uh, Shizuku here. And I'm going to go ahead and set my Imperm. Because I have Monsters in the field. There's no point in keeping it in my hand. I have an Effect Veiler and I have Max C. So I essentially have two Turn Stoppers here. Right? So now I'm going to go ahead and... Set the engage for another follow-up next turn. Set the afterburner to destroy a monster next turn. And I'm going to go ahead and actually take a jamming waves. Now, in the TCG, jamming waves is not something that people typically play. It's a little bit slower because not very many people play back row in TCG. However, you are playing in a best of one. I do know that virtual worlds, they do have their spells and traps in the field, which can hurt me severely so i go ahead and add the jamming waves that way next turn i know to get rid of his his back row that i'm sure he should have all right so he's gonna play desires draw two which is very good and obviously now he's got e telly so i'm gonna go ahead and max c here so i'm automatically gonna get my draw one make sure you guys aren't activating your max c's at draw phase standby phase or something like that you typically want to wait until they are forced to go into a summon so you chain it to a, a card that's already going to summon a card when you're in draw phase or something like that and you activate the maxi 
they could just not summon at all and pass. So essentially your max C will have been a neg one. However, you do want at least to go neutral with your draws. So now he's going into his, uh, he has two virtual world monsters in the field and he's going to go into the croc, uh, croc a dragon. And here I'm just going to go ahead and impermit. And I think he quits here at this point. He hasn't drawn the cards that he needs. Uh, you know, I have too much an advantage. I have Kaiser Colosseum, so that's going to stop him from being able to summon too much. Yeah, yeah. I probably would have scooped two. Okay, so next one we're going to go over is a five-turn duel. Um, the last turn duel, that, or last duel that I do have is an eight-turn duel, so it lasted a little bit. It's got some good content. Uh, but, I mean, Sky Strikers are just good overall, especially if you are a decent player. But like I said, you have to know what you're doing in order to make the most effectiveness out of your cards. All right, so here I'm going to be playing Trap Tricks. Uh, yeah, Trap Tricks. Um, now... This one, I hurt myself a lot because I needed to make sure I have things on the field to go through. I think that he burns me for like 7,000, like first turn, basically. And I need to make sure that I can I have some sort of advantage. So I'm just really trying to just burn through all of his resources in one turn to make sure that I have follow-up next turn, right? So I'm going to go ahead and imperm that so he doesn't get an, uh, a, uh, a trap hole card to his uh, back row. And he's going to link. I forgot that Trap Tricks have uh, Sarah now, so... Sarah helps this deck quite a bit. And he's going to go into his Xyz. Yep. And then he's going to go into his Reflesia. Now what Reflesia does is it can copy a... Um, detach one, send one normal tra uh, normal hole trap card. And then um, that meets its activations. And then it can pretty much just copy the effect of the card that you sent. So... Um, now I know, I don't know what these are here, right? But I do know that they're going to be trap hole cards, obviously, because he's playing trap tricks. So I need to make sure I'm trying to play around that. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and play Kaiser Colosseum because I don't want to, I don't want him to play a card that can allow him to special summon another monster. So it matches whatever I have on the field. I'm going to go ahead and play the multi-roll just to have it on the field. And the first thing he does here is whenever I summon my Ray, I'm going to try to attempt to normal or to special summon Rose, but he has Gravedigger trap hole. So he's going to negate the effect. And it's going to make me burn for 2,000, which is going to hurt me a lot. I mean, 2,000 is not a small number. So I'm going to go ahead and link here into Hayate. Because I have, at this point, I don't really have anything. I have nothing engraved that's going to help me really, except the raid when a uh, Link Monster gets destroyed. I have no follow-ups next turn. I don't have any spells to be able to set. I need to make sure I am playing aggressively here to make sure that I don't die immediately on the next turn. So when I go for an attack, he's going to activate a uh, trap hole of spikes. Uh, when an opponent's monster that was normal summon or special summon this turn declares an attack, being my Hayate, destroy the attacking monster. And if I do inflict damage to me, equal to half of its attack, right? So that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and get my Ray effect in Grave. And then because he activated a trap hole card, he's going to get his um, Sarah effect. I'm going to go ahead and Ash it. And then obviously he also has a Reflesia. So like he just has follow-up after follow-up. And I, I was trying to match it, but I didn't have the follow-ups that I needed, right? So now I do have game knowledge that he has only one back row set, right? But that's that doesn't help me too much because he has three monsters. Um, he was able to summon the one card because my Kaiser Coliseum was in effect, but I had no monsters in the field. So that worked out for him. But I'm going to go ahead and use its effect and try to go into... Uh, another monster or i'm attribute not using its effect but attribute it to go into engage or into shizuku because i know at the at this point there's not much more i can do i have 3200 life points right and now i'm gonna go ahead and activate shizuku's effect i need to have engage because i need a spell engrave i need to make sure that i can search for something that i need next turn so i do have kaiser coliseum unless he destroys my shizuku he won't be able to summon any more monsters so he is going to put it into attack mode it's just 200 over my Shizuku. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and get my Ray effect. Summon the Ray. Now, I probably could have put it in defense position just in case. However, there was nothing else he could have really attacked with. I mean, Replizzi only has 300 attack and Sarah only has 800. So I was safe. However, he did set another back row card. And he has three back row cards now, right? So I'm trying to get the advantage in my uh, on the field. That way I can try to go into like Zeke or... or uh, Nightmare uh, Phoenix or something like that to be able to destroy his back row, but I'm hurting here because when I try to activate Rose again, he has another Gravedigger Trap Hole. I'm going to take 2,000 here. It's going to put me down to 1,050. It's going to negate the effect. And then he's going to go ahead and set another back row card.
And this time it's uh, the Network Trap Hole. When your opponent special summons a monster from the main deck or graveyard, banish it face down. So now he ha now I have game knowledge that this is going to be something that can stop my ray when I summon it from graveyard, right? However, I do top deck this Harpy's Feather Duster, which won me the game, really. I mean, you always... In any deck that you're playing, especially in a best of one, play at least one back row, like one out to back row. Always play at least one. Don't don't assume that you're going to be fine. Play at least one because it can help you. Right? So he's going to go ahead and activate the Shade Brigadine because it's not considered a trap card when you activate it. So he's going to have a free monster on the field. That's fine. I'm going to get rid of his two back row. And from here, I'm safe. Essentially. like I, I can, I'm okay here at this point. However, he does destroy my multi-roll. And now he does have... This trap tricks trap hole uh, nightmare, and when a monster that was special summoned this turn activates its effect on my opponent's field, negate the effect and destroy that monster. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into engage now, right? I'm so I'm gonna normal summon my ray, activate rose. I know for certain that that's not a grave digger trap hole, so I'm okay here. I'm gonna link off into Kagari because I have not used Kagari, and this is very important because you have to realize that you have to make sure your resource management is effective to make sure you can't continue playing later on in the grind game all right so now we go into zeke i'm going to banish one card draw or uh search a card i'm gonna go ahead and activate network now at this point i really don't have much more i can go into right like i have a zeke and kaiser coliseum on the field i need to make sure i'm making a play that's going to help me out later in the game kaiser coliseum is not helping me here because if i if he goes into the next turn he could essentially just go into access code or something like that which would put you know match my one for one on the field i need to make sure i'm doing something that can help me here right so i activate zeke's effect to destroy my own area zero special summon ray Attack over his attack, high attack beater. Now I'm going to go into and attacking his Sarah for 800. Now I destroyed an extra deck monster, right? So now with Rose in the graveyard, I can special summon my Rose, which is another attack that I can go into, which is great. I'm going to link these both off into Nightmare Unicorn. I'm going to go ahead and spin his back row. Or no, I'm sorry. I don't have, I don't have a card in my hands. Um, Nightmare Unicorn, no effect. I have four on the field uh, for a link four. And I'm, he has no cards in hand, and I have no cards in hand. So I need to make sure I'm doing something here that's going to help. So I go ahead and pop his two back row. Whatever his, his next card is has to be a top deck of this century. And it's just a shoot, I believe. And, it, and there, was, there wasn't much he could have done there. All right, so now we got one more duel. We're going to go over this uh, Japanese character duel. Now, I do believe that this was a Trabigate duel, and it was a very good game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, let's see what we can show which... You know, show what I did here. I believe this is a tri brigade game. I don't know. We'll see. So now I do draw into Kaiser Coliseum, which essentially does help really like a lot against tri brigades. Um, he's going first. I do have an effect veiler to be able to stop one thing, but that's the only hand trap I have here to help me. Oh, this is not the tri brigades. I'm sorry. This is the Lair of Darkness. Now, this was a good game too. Not gonna lie. But it it was tough because I'm going so I have Kaiser Coliseum in my hand, but the Layer of Darkness cards or deck doesn't really special summon like it's not to where they're flooding the, their board like they don't have a full board, so I can't really make him match my one monster on the field with his one monster because then he's just going to continuously tr tribute my one monster to gain advantage. Right? I'm gonna go ahead and activate the Kaiser Coliseum anyways. I'm gonna negate that that way he doesn't have the tribute effect. Special summon one. Now, I don't have a ray. Obviously, I would like to have a ray in my hand, but I don't. And I'm just going to go into Hayate here. And now he's just going to go ahead and use its effect. Now, whenever I essentially activated my Widow Anchor, I meant to negate its effect. However, I forgot that its tribute was a cost. So, like, whenever he would tribute, it's cost, which means that once he's tributed, the effect would still go through. Or he would at least tribute my monster and get it off the field. Completely forgot about that. It's okay. It works out in my favor anyways. Um, because I kind of, uh, we'll see, we'll, 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 we're going to go ahead and go through this. So he's going to go ahead and tribute the one layer of darkness token that he made on my side of the field. That way he can go into another summon because with that layer of darkness card token on my side of the field, he is locked in with Kaiser Coliseum. So it does allow him an extra summon. He's going to go into his tour guide. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to give him that much advantage. 
So I will imperm that, right? So now he's just gonna be stuck with the 1,000 attack tour god and his uh, Lilith. Now I do take 3k here. I don't really have much going for me here. I do have my area zero. And Ka like I said, Kaiser Coliseum is not gonna really help me because he he just tributes my own cards to be able to clear my board. So here I'm gonna target my own Kaiser Coliseum. And he's just gonna reveal three Dogmatic of Punishments. That's fine. He actually doesn't even use it this turn, uh, this game because I th I think he may have used like Pot of Desires or something like that and wasn't able to didn't have any targets or something. I'm not sure what he does. It doesn't work out for him. Now what he's gonna do is activate Ballista Squad. Now what it does is just tributes one monster, then targets one card my opponent controls and destroy it. And obviously whenever he uses Layer of Darkness, he is able to tribute one monster I use I control. Now for whatever reason, whenever he does do that, um, he tributes my one. Uh, Ray and then he targets my area zero and destroys it wasn't a very good idea on his part because I could just summon another Ray Go into Ray use her effect Tribute her go into a Kagari And I'm just gonna go ahead and attack over uh, we're gonna crash because we both had 2k um, But that's fine because then I get my Ray, my Ray effect in graveyard and I'm just gonna go ahead and poke for another 1500 now at the end phase I'll probably go into Shizuku here like everybody does End phase, use it. I think I'm probably going to add an engage. Yep, there's the engage. And now we tributed three monsters this turn, and he's just going to flood my board. That way he does have... I have four monsters in the field. That means he can have four monsters in the field. Oh, not, my Kaiser Coliseum has gone, so it doesn't matter. But he doesn't have anything anyways. Um, he just sets one passes. That's fine for me. I can't activate my Sky Striker spell cards because I do have monsters in my main monster zone. That's okay. Um, I don't need the Jizuku anymore, so I'm just gonna go ahead and summon my Hayate, put these all into attack position. He gives me free attack uh, attack monsters I can use, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. But he's gonna use his Ballista Squad, try to reduce the damage that he's gonna take, so he tributes my Shizuku and one token to destroy. That's fine, I still have two. I'll go ahead and poke him for 2k. Now here, I'm gonna go into Nightmare Phoenix. Now I thought about uh, trying to use the cards that I had to go into access code, but I didn't want to overextend and hurt myself He's gonna activate foolish burial that's fine now he's pretty at this point He's really just trying to do whatever he can to get a monster on the field to prevent himself from taking too much damage He's out resourced himself, so now there's not much he can do. I top deck Pot of Desires, which is great for me. And I draw into an upstart, draw another card. I give him 1,000, it's okay. Now I'm gonna tribute these three, I'm gonna go into Nightmare Unicorn. Cause I do have an Ash, I can just do a free normal summon, go into something else. Now Max C, I don't really care for because he's not really special summoning. Like he's not, it's not a combo heavy deck where he's special summoning 10 times in one turn. So I don't care for Max C right now. I'll activate my um, engage, add a ray, draw one card. Now I'm gonna special summon his Lilith, just for so I can go into the access code with his own monster. Now, luckily, his back row wasn't anything to be scared of. Now I'm just gonna use its effect, destroy his back row. Now, remember what I said? He did have the dogmatic of punishment. Now, if he did punishment this, that'd have been fine. I had more follow-ups with uh, with Ray. I had more monsters in my extra deck that I could have gone into. But that's fine. So like I said, I don't think that he had anything he could have used to do it. Either his like like his extra deck was messed up. Like he didn't use any of his extra deck. So I'm not sure what he did here. But it just he for whatever reason he didn't do it. Ends turn. Uh and quits. Um so like I said, I do have like uh like all of these are Sky Striker decks. Um I will make one more video with my Sky Strikers. If you guys like the deck profile, again, Kaiser Coliseum. It not being banned with this deck, it, it works. Like Kaiser Coliseum is good. If you don't have Mystic Mind, you can play Kaiser Coliseum, and Kaiser Coliseum helps out Sky Striker decks quite a bit. Now I've seen so many deck profiles that aren't running it, and I'm telling you, you need to run it. Um, so that's gonna do it, guys. Uh, if you guys enjoy the content, make sure that you guys are liking and subscribing. I will upload another video later this week, and then I will also upload a deck profile video for the Sky Strikers. Uh, if you guys do want that. 
Now, again, I am Manticore. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace.